Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Yongnuo 35mm f2 lens. Stay tuned. When Yongnuo contacted me if, about a month ago to review their 35mm f.2 for Sony cameras, I was a bit nervous at first. I have a lot of experience with this focal length. I've been photographing since I was a little kid, which is measured in decades at this point, and I've been photographing professionally for 23 years. So I know this focal length from many different brands and from many different versions of the same lens. Here's a list of every lens that I've used during that time. And you can see that it's from every single make of camera. Now, I don't intend to compare the Yongnuo 35mm to all of these lenses, but what I do want to do is I want to compare it with my all-time favorite lens, period. It's my all-time favorite lens because it hits every criteria that I could want in a lens, and that's the Sony 35mm f1.8. This is a big lens for this smaller, cheaper lens to be able to be compared to, but it's probably the best thing to use as a benchmark for me since it does check every box that I like. Here's a list of all the criteria that I have when I'm looking for a lens. I'll put up the list right here and I'm just going to read them off for you. It has to be very small and very light. If I don't want to use a lens, it's usually because it's too heavy and I don't want to carry it around with me. If I, I'm comfortable with having it on a camera and in a bag for the entire day while I'm walking around or hiking or photographing a wedding, then that's already a big plus for that lens. It has to be sharp. It doesn't have to be pin sharp. It doesn't have to be crazy, but it has to be reliable and I have to know that it's going to nail focus. Um, it also has to give you enough of background separation. So f1.8 is a sweet spot for me. f.2 is very close and I'm going to take a look at the difference between the two in a few minutes. It has, like I said, focus reliably. It has to be not crazy expensive. I run a photography business and I don't want to be spending all of my money on gear. I know it's very common for people to want to just keep buying and getting better and better lenses and sharper, bigger apertures and all that sort of thing, but it really has to be a workhorse of a lens. Um, it also has to have very little or no focus breathing when it's being used for video. And also for video, I prefer if it has silent focus. Uh, interestingly enough, I'm using the Yongnuo f2.0 lens right now to videotape this tape, to video this um, sequence that I'm doing right now to show you what it's like. And I have it using autofocus. So I'll be able to show you whether or not it makes any noise when I'm using a shotgun mic on top, even though I'm recording in here at the same time. First, let's start off with the specs that I'll put throw on the screen right here. First thing you'll notice that I have a few areas that are highlighted in green, and those are the areas where these lenses differ the most. For the most part, the areas that aren't uh, highlighted are actually so similar that they really don't matter. As you can see from the weight between the Yongnuo and the Sony, they're only a few grams apart. For fun, I put the weight of the Sony F1.4 and all the specs of the Sony F1.4 just to see how different they actually are from those starting off at the top where you can see that the weight of the Sony is actually double the weight and size of the uh, F1.8. Okay, so let's go into where the things differ between the two. The Yongnuo's um, maximum aperture is F2. So it's very close to F1.8, but it's going to be important for some people. So I'm going to compare and see how they differ when it comes right down to it. Its minimum uh, aperture is F16 compared to the F22 on the Sony F1.8 which has absolutely no bearing for me since I never shoot above f8, let alone f16, and anything above f11 tends to give you a lot of refraction in the first place, so why bother? Now, minimum focus is another big one. The Yongnuo can do a, a minimum focus distance of 35 centimeters, which isn't a ton um, compared to the 22 centimeters of the Sony, and I'm going to show you what the difference is that when you're, when you're actually looking at an image or a video. Dimensions are very, very similar. Yongnuo is actually a little bit smaller. Filter size is a bit smaller on the Yongnuo. It's 52 millimeters uh, compared to 55 for the Sony. But then when we come to the price, this is a big one. I see this, the Yongnuo uh, priced in US dollars anywhere between 278 and $220 compared to 748 for the Sony. Uh, in Canadian dollars, uh, that comes out to about 423 to as low as 294 for the Yongnuo and 700, or basically 800 to 700 for the Sony. That's a big difference and it's probably the biggest uh, bearing on the value of the Yongnuo lens. Okay, so let's get into the actual differences so you can see how different it is with video and photo. 
Before moving on to the photo and video characteristics of these two lenses, let's take a look at the differences in them physically. They both come with almost identical switches and buttons on them. One button for tracking or whatever you want to map it to, and then an auto and manual focus switch. Rotating the lens, you'll see a bit of text and a few differences in color, but cosmetically, it'd be hard to tell apart if you weren't taking a, a close look. The only real difference you'll see is that the Yongna is slightly shorter than the Sony. The front elements are a little bit more different because you can see that on the Sony it has a much bigger glass element and you can see that it's a 55 millimeter filter thread while the Yongno is a 52 millimeter. Looking at the back of the lenses they are both weather sealed and everything else looks the same. It's a metal mount and they're virtually indistinguishable without knowing which is which. Now moving on to focusing this is how they compare when they're both set to f2 and moving back from foreground to background, back and forth. If you just take a look at these as they go, you'll notice that the Sony is maybe slightly faster, but not that much faster than the Young No. I certainly didn't notice it when I was just using it normally. Never found that it hunted or that it took longer than the Sony. Now both lenses are set to f5.6 and we're shooting with a lot less light hitting the sensor. I'm set here at 3200 ISO and the focus speed is still pretty reasonable and it's not something that I would worry about. Maybe slightly slower, but it's slower in both. So the both lenses compare quite similarly. God, I hate that word. In this set, both lenses are set to f2. Again, this is just to compare the uh, type of bokeh that we have in the background. We're at the minimum focus distance for the young no, and I've set the same distance for the Sony. They're virtually indistinguishable in terms of the bokeh characteristics and how much blur you get. And then beside the Sony F2 is a Sony set to F1.8. You get a slight increase in the blur, but something you wouldn't really notice unless you had them side by side. As mentioned when I was reading the specs, the minimum focus distance of the Yongno is 35 centimeters versus 22 centimeters for the Sony. This is what it actually looks like in practice. Both are set to their minimum focus distance, and you can see how that looks here. Now let's take a look at the bokeh or the background blur quality of each of these lenses. On the left with the Yongno, you can see that it looks good. It looks like you would expect with at f2. Same with the Sony f2. It's actually quite hard to distinguish between the two. Now taking a look at the difference between f2 and the Sony's f1.8, you can see that there's a bit more blur with the Sony on the right, um, although you really have to take a good close look to tell much of a difference. Now stopping down to f4 with these two lenses, now you can see more of a difference. When you look at the Yong nose f4, you get a hexagonal pattern with the uh, bokeh balls in the back with the lights. And on the right with the Sony at f4, it's a nice even round type of bokeh. This isn't something that I noticed at all until I did this test. So it's not something that factors in that much, but it's worth considering if you like to take a lot of photos that have this sort of pattern. Now, one thing I did want to mention, because I noticed this while I was testing, if you look in the top left corner of both of these images, you notice that on the Young Nuo, the, uh, there's a bit of a haze over that black mask. That's coming from a brightly lit window to the right of the camera, and it's caused by a bit by lens flare, and you can see it more on the Young Nuo than you can on the Sony. Again, this is something that I only noticed while I was running these tests, but in normal day-to-day -day use, I didn't notice any difference at all, but worth noting. So after comparing everything side by side in the studio, what's it like to use every day out in the real world? Let's take a look. This is the off season for me, so I haven't had the chance to use the Young No 35mm on a commercial shoot. I'm also not one to hire a model and do a pretend fashion shoot and get a provocative thumbnail out of it. Instead, I will manipulate you with cuteness in the form of my dog. I spent a lot of time over the holidays walking with her and using the lens with my family. As you can see from the following images, everything worked out great. The first three images show that focus on the Young No 35mm is as reliable as can be. At 100% zoom, they are flawless. The rest of the images were taken at random times over the holidays, on different days, in different light, and of whatever I felt like photographing. At no point did I have any issues with focus or lens flare, nor did I notice any weird bokeh in the images. I also didn't have the need to focus any closer than a few feet. As a result, I didn't see any issues with this lens until I really tried to find faults with it. My takeaway is that most of these supposed faults are non-issues for me. 
So for me, after testing this lens out in the studio and seeing what all the differences were and how the Sony was better in certain ways, it kind of made me doubt what I thought about this lens. Ironically though, after having used it for about three weeks in everyday use, walking around with it, doing it, using it for video, using it for this, I noticed that I don't actually see any difference at all in when I'm using it and when I compare the footage or compare the photos afterwards. It's obvious to me that a lot of these micro differences don't make a lot of difference in the real world, so I'm not worried about it so much. I'm not trying to convince people to buy this lens for any other reason other than the fact that it's a really good deal and it's, uh, it still gets the job done. If you're really paranoid about the little things that I mentioned before, certainly it's, you're probably better off getting even a Sony F1.4 lens when that's one of their G Master lenses. But in the case of being uh, value packed and having everything that you actually need, this lens is fantastic. And it's actually one that I would use myself. So in conclusion, it's a great lens. I would actually use it. And if it was the only lens available, I'd be totally happy with it. So that should do it for this video. If you got anything out of this one, please let me know. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, have a great day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.